Welcome back. We are playing Battletech and today we are going to discuss the mech bay and customizing your mechs. So we'll head on over to the mech bay. Now in the mech bay you can do two things as outlined here, bays and yang. If you click on yang, he'll give you a little background on the mech bay, what you can do, uh, you know, and then you have this backstory that you can get to know him if you like to. Now the majority of the time when you come to the mech bay you're going to be customizing your mechs and or repairing them too so this is a great example I fought a battle and I unfortunately lost a few arms in my king crab now here so let me let me take a step back when you actually lose a component in a battle you can't actually just click the repair button. You actually have to refit the mech and replace the pieces that were blown off. And when you do that, you can see what you lost. Now, unfortunately, I lost an AC20 triple plus. That's going to really hurt, but luckily I have another one. I lost two AC20 ammos. So I'm going to scroll down and... I put those in the shoulder, so I'll put them in again, or the torso. Yeah, I lost the heat sink, so we'll come over to equipment, click on the heat sink, add the heat sink in, and then we also lost a medium laser uh, as the last one. Now that was a triple plus, I don't, we do have one with accuracy. So that's key to note. Sometimes if you ask yourself, you know, why can't I just click the repair button on the outside and I have to refit, it's because you lost gear in these pieces and it wants you to replace it with either this, you know, new stuff or different stuff. One thing to always note, I always like to click repair all just to make sure that all uh, the internal structure damage is repaired. Armor will be automatically repaired. Um, which is this stuff down here but the structural damage which is the actual structure of the mech if it takes damage you will have to click the repair all button or replace if you actually lose an arm or torso or leg another thing to note here up here you have four useful buttons repair all which you always want to click in case there is internal damage strip equipment that will strip away everything in here strip armor it'll zero out your armor and remove the armor and max armor it'll maximize and distribute your armor around your mech there are four very helpful buttons um, that you can think about using now I'm going to confirm this it's going to take seven days unfortunately I want to show you something about that uh, when you click on refit here and we're going to do it in our victor just as an example when we strip equipment, you can see it strips all equipment. Just going to undo that. When you strip armor, you can see that it is literally zeroed out all armor. Be very careful when you click this button because you want armor, it's very important. But the nice thing it tells you is that it, it gives you a sense for what you can really put on your mech. Right? Now, if I hypothetically thought that I could put this as a range mech, or ensure that it took a no damage then I might strip armor but I never recommend you do that the last thing is max armor you see it's going to distribute your armor around front and back based off the preset recommendation now one thing I want to show you here is we have 85 85 40 75 if we click max armor it actually redistributes your armor allocation so if you manually have tinkered with it where you say I want my left side to have more armor or maybe my right side and you click this button you're gonna it's gonna redistribute it based off its preset here you can see its natural inclination is to put more armor on the torso in the center and then more in the front than the back assuming you're gonna face an enemy mech now here's another interesting thing let's say I don't like these two medium lasers and I want to get rid of them once I get rid of them, if I remax armor, it's going to increase it again. So when you are customizing your mech, right, let's say you only want SRMs and AC20s, 
go ahead and hit that max armor button to distribute it around. Now one thing I always like to do is that if I have an arm that has no weapons in it, I'll take down this armor and then I'm going to redistribute it either to the back or the front of more core places. So you want high armor in your center torso, high armor in your left and right torsos, and fairly decent armor in your legs. Uh, just as a as a best practice in my opinion. All right, so we're gonna undo this, and we are gonna actually start customizing a few mechs here. Now, one thing to note, and one question a lot of people ask is, how do I add mechs to these slots? Because when you click on them, it's not necessarily that intuitive, right? I can't, unfortunately, just add the mech. The way you add your mechs to your slots are you actually have to click on storage. When you click on storage, you can see all the mechs that you have here, right? So one quantity. But what you can also see is the ones that you're working on. So I have one out of three quick draw 4G. That's the 4G is the variant. Um, and a quick aside there, the first three letters are the type of mech. So this DRG is actually the dragon. TDR is the Thunderbolt. Then when the dash, the second letters is the variant. So when we look at the two different variants here for the Thunderbolt, we have a 5S and a 5SS. Well, the 5S, if you look over here, it tells you what hard points, what types of weapons you can put in it. Here for the S 5S, we can put two ballistics, four lasers, two missiles, and two um, support weapon hardpoints. So those are machine guns or flamers and um, four jump jets. Jump jets won't vary between mech types so all Thunderbolts will have four jump jet locations. However, when we click on the 5SS we notice that this changes. This has no ballistic points but it has seven laser points, one missile points, and again uh, two support weapon points. And, they, and we see that the jump jets stay the same. So that's something to think about um, here. I always, you know, periodically, let's say I'm really working on a mech that I really want, so say maybe a king crab or something, I'll periodically just, ta you know, click on the storage to see, oh, do I have two out of three parts, one out of three parts before a mission? So if that mech pops up, I know. So here for the king crab, I have two out of three parts. Um, so I know in the next mission, I'm okay just blowing up that king crab, especially if he has two AC-20s, because I know I only need one part to complete it. The other piece you can do here is components. Now when you click on components, this is going to show you all the gear that you have. You know, you can scroll through all of it. On the left here, you can kind of sort different things if you want to look at just ballistics, just lasers, or just ballistics and lasers, etc you have options here. And um, what you can also do is you can tab between weapons and equipment. So equipment are these other things that you're gonna put on your mech that we're gonna see here in a second. All right, so let's go back to the bay and let's at random pick a mech. We are gonna pick the awesome. When we pick the awesome, it already has some stuff on it. We see that it has uh, seven energy hard points and right now we're using three of them and, and it has uh, zero ballistics and missile hard points so that means when it says zero there we can put no ballistics on and we can put no missiles on even if we wanted to it just the mech doesn't have space for it uh, it has one support weapon a hard point and then it has three jump jets hard point so we're gonna refit this mech because right now if you look at it I think it's a little goofy. Yeah, we have three PPCs and a ton of heat sinks. All right, when you are customizing your mech, there are several things that you wanna keep in mind. The first thing is really understanding up here, the, oops, we don't wanna click on that. Your um, basically general mech stats is what I like to call it. I always look at the top left when I'm building a mech. So let's trip out equipment here. So right now you see that it has zero firepower. It has 
basically perfect heat efficiency because we can't fire a weapon so it's never going to get hot. It's still, it has one movement, it has fairly good durability, has fairly good melee stats, and then it has uh, effectively zero range since we have no weapons. Now for this mech, remember we can only put lasers on. So we're just going to select lasers and we're going to start adding stuff to it. So let's add a large laser. As soon as we add a large laser, you notice that the range then gets highlighted. So we have a pretty good range. Now the large laser here, if we look at it, it a range is long. So its max range is 450 meters. Its optimal range is 300 meters. So that's really important to note, right? If we're too far away, if we're at max range, our percent chance hit could decrease. Um, and then some weapons like missiles, if you get too close, you actually um, also start losing your ability to uh, your hit percentage there. So here you can see it has a minimum 180 range. If you get closer than that, you're going to drop off to being able to barely hit and potentially, um, you know, your percentage is going to be so low that none of your missiles are going to hit in this case. So when I'm looking at this, um, the way you, you can see that is that it has extreme range, uh, minimum, optimal, and maximum. So we, you know, this is 630 meters. I think extreme range is the farthest or furthest you can get. Now let's go back. So again, always pay attention up here as you're building your mech, right? So heat efficiency is about, you know, halfway through. And I am looking here and I say, um, I have 40, you know, I have 34.5 tons remaining. So your top left corner, I think is, you know, probably the most useful. You want to look at this area whenever you're building the mech. So this will tell you general performance of, of your mech when you're in combat. And then this is also very helpful. This is your tons, right? Each mech has a particular tonnage and each, you know, item, either weapon, equipment, or even armor has a set number of weight, you know, a set weight which will take up that, that tonnage there. So we have 34.5 tons to play with, right? So I'm thinking, you know what? The awesome is normally long range and it, it's known for its PPCs. So let's put a bunch of PPC pluses on. And what do I want to do there for my PPC pluses? I really like damage and I also like accuracy. So I put two on. Now when I put these two on, I have 25.5 tons remaining. I want to refer to this panel again. And all of a sudden I realize this is not heat efficient. If I just go in with these two PPCs and I don't do anything else, he's barely going to be able to fire. That's not going to do me any good. And he has, you know, three ticks of uh, firepower performance, opting up to, to potentially five. So as soon as I see this, I want to start thinking, I'm going to need heat sinks. So the way I like to build my mech is I want to make sure that these stats are balanced, firepower and heat efficiency. Now one thing that I always recommend, if you're running an assault or if you're running a light, it doesn't matter or anything in between. I personally love jump jets. They create additional evasion. They allow you to jump and face any direction you want. Even with these assault mechs, while it's classically not, you know, normally used, I still think that they're invaluable. At the very least, put on one. I always try to max them out for a few reasons. Assaults tend to be slower, and sometimes if they get in trouble, I want to be able to run away or use the terrain to my advantage. Jump behind a rock, jump behind a mountain, you know, jump behind other mechs to try to deprioritize the focus on my mech, although that doesn't always work. One thing you're going to notice here is I put three jump jets, which is our allowed maximum here, three out of three. And you can see that the movement has increased slightly. That means with these three jump jets, when I'm jumping, I can jump slightly further than I'm going to be able to run. Now, right now, I don't like the fact that we're so heat inefficient. I want to make sure that I can fire these PPCs on cooldown consistently. So I'm going to add a bunch of heat sinks to try to get him up to at least four because I really want, you know, to be able to fire these um, 
you know, a, a fair amount. Perfect. So I'm at four. That's fantastic. And I have 14.5 tons left. All right. Let's talk about um, upgrades, equipment upgrades. There are a lot of them. You're going to start accruing them. And quite frankly, it might be very easy to ignore them. I recommend that you always check in and see what equipment mods you have. So that's equipment and then this um, upgrades piece. Um, so here you can see I have a bunch of arm mods and each mod does something different. This one does plus 60 melee stability damage. Our melee performance is it has a set amount of damage or performance per weighting. So your assault mechs to you know hit the hardest, your light mechs hit you know the least hard. Right, and so that's basically the base damage to it. But we can add these upgrades to change that. So right now you can see that he's you know almost you know full up on his melee damage capability. Let's see if we can take it up more. So this is to melee stability damage. This is plus 15 melee damage. So you see another pip added. We're upgrading. Let's see if we can max it out. Plus stability damage, plus melee stability damage, plus 10 melee damage. All right, not there yet. Plus 10 melee damage, oops. Oh, that's still stability damage. So stability damage also upgrades your melee performance here. So if we put it here, we've kind of maxed them out. You know, and now if we put all the rest on there, I, I don't think we can get, you know, get there even with these. Now one thing I want you guys to remember is that you have your fixed amount of tonnage or, you know, weight that you can put on the mech. So if we look at this plus plus mod, we're like plus 60 melee stability damage. That's awesome. I want to put that on all my mechs. I'll just run up and knock them over every time. Well, you have to consider a few things. This is six tons, right? That's a lot of weight. To put it in perspective, your PPC is seven tons. So you can fire the PPC from really far away right where if you're carrying around this awesome arm mod you know you, you've taken up weight and second of all it only works when you melee a mech and you know assaults tend to be very slow so it's going to take you forever running up there taking damage before you can hit them so you want to make sure that you're understanding these trade-offs right you might say well look this plus 10 melee stability damage it's only two tons well that might be enough right now the key to stability is we want to put enough stacks of melee or stability damage to knock over a mech but you know the most in one turn you can get is causing the enemy mech to be unsteady um, at least that's the only thing I've experienced I've hit them with um, what I like to call infinite uh, LRMs from one mech so a stalker filled out with LRMs and I, you know, more than doubled up on his stability damage bars that he can take, and he only went unsteady. So you have to hit twice. So keep that in the back of your mind. All right, so we have arm mods, which are great. We have, um, you know, gy gyros, uh, which will help you with stability. So a lot of these are minus stability damage taken. Um, you can have plus plus two hit defense. So if enemy mechs are trying to melee you, uh, you can defend against it to a degree. And these have to go in the center torso because they have to do with balance. Uh, so that's something you want to keep in mind. Then you have leg mods. Leg mods have to go in the leg and they do different things. So for the leg mods, we have leg mods that reduce death from above self damage right we have leg mods that increase death from above damage and then um, I think those are the only two now this is something where you always want to be checking because you're gonna want your targeting systems um, targeting and tracking systems TTS these prove invaluable especially if you are leveling up a mech warrior 
who has low hit and you just want to make sure that happens now f we are going with the PPC build here I recommend having an accuracy increase to energy because we have energy weapons right so you guys can see this real quick plus three accuracy to energy weapons that's fantastic all right let's see we have 11 tons to play with um, you know while he's pretty good at our range here I think that we want to do some medium to close range uh, options right so let's put on a few medium lasers we have a medium laser plus plus oops let's put it there I like to stack my weapons on my torso first because you have your arm now one other thing real quick I know I'm jumping around I apologize and I don't have one available here is a cockpit mod a cockpit mod there, there there's a cockpit mod and then the range finder so the cockpit mod actually increases the number of injuries your mech warrior can take in a mech I always recommend putting cockpit mods in a uh, close range brawling mechs and quite frankly if you have enough I'd recommend putting them in all of your mechs on mech warriors who do not have high guts because then you can make sure that they can take more injury damage right and it's easy to lose a mech warrior if you only have three injuries incurred maybe the enemies are just LRMing you you get a head head shot hit where your pilot's injured then you get knocked over then you get knocked over again your pilot could die and, and your mechs out of commission the rest of the mission so the other thing that you can put in the cockpit is also called a rangefinder um, and that will effectively increase the distance your mech can see that's very helpful and I wish we had one for this mech because he is kind of a sniping mech if you look at it alright so let's see I put on a few medium lasers um, I have effectively maxed him out oops I can add one more to the head now it's interesting sometimes heads do have hard points so you have to trade off do you want to put a cockpit mod or a rangefinder in there versus a, a laser I want this guy to do as much damage as possible so I'm gonna just kinda of throw in a laser now you notice that I'm referring back to here I've greatly increased my firepower but my heat efficiency is very low I want to bring that back up because I want to be able to fire these weapons as much as possible alright so I'm adding in more heat sinks let's see let's see um, alright so I have half a ton but heat sinks cost one ton so it doesn't quite work so I'm back up to three I have pretty good firepower I have good ranged and I have good long range weaponry and I have good medium to short range weaponry with all these medium lasers so this mech's looking pretty good and I have five or half a ton left where am I gonna put it I always recommend you put it in armor if you have extra tonnage which you will sometimes put it in armor also one mistake a lot of beginners or, or even experts make is they want to fill up all of these hard points that's not always necessarily good you know one question we can ask ourselves is do we need four medium lasers or five medium lasers I might say no we don't so I'm gonna take one off so we only have six lasers and I might put in a cockpit mod there or what I might do is I might click this max armor to make sure the mech has more armor lastly one thing I want you always to consider is having that open left arm or right arm um, when it comes to just either not being able to put weapons in there or deciding not to put weapons in there right now I have a left arm that has nothing in it with 103 armor right now what I've done is I've, I've allocated the armor around you can see here that I'm almost maxed out on my center torso I max out on my my left and right torsos I max out on my head and I'm pretty high up on my right arm I have two medium lasers in my right arm and a heat sink I have nothing in my left arm so I'm gonna take this down to 70 and I'm gonna bring this up to make sure that I have more armor here 
So in battle, what I might do is I might turn my left side to take a few hits, and once this armor is gone, I'm going to turn to my right side. So I spread damage during the battle. Then I always like to have a little extra armor in my legs. Um, and the reason I do that is that I just never want to get legged in the event that I have to to um, run away. Now one thing here which is kind of weird in a quirk is that you can see that when I clicked maxed armor and it distributed it, it kind of put three in each, right? So it's not, you know, I'm not quite even. So to even it out to make sure I can get to that maxed armor again, what I have to do is actually click down on each of the leg ones or anything that has an odd number. So like here I'm clicking down on the 121. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to click down so it's 100, um, so that's just a quirk. I'm going to bring that up to 120, and then this is 110. And am I... We should be able to get to max tonnage. That's weird. Huh. Maybe it's a bug in the game. So three, six, seven, ten. Okay, so you have to do some math here. Um, because you, you want it to be either five or ten. So we're increasing this one to 120. One of these legs will have a little more. Ah, okay. So the way we're going to do this is we're reducing. So that's three, four, seven, ten. I'm going to increase this, decrease this a little bit to 90 increase this leg to 110. We have to leave this 103 to, to get it. Now it's okay if you want to leave some ton tonnage on the table um, you can. I do not recommend it. You want to optimize your mech. So always try to do the math a little bit because you never know. Maybe if I'm turning my left side this leg might get hit more. And that's a legitimate strategy. When you, depending on your playstyle, some people might take the opposite approach and say this. You know what? I'm going to decrease the armor on my right torso a bunch, and I'm going to increase it on my left arm to max. I'm going to max out my left arm. I'm going to max out my left leg. And the reason I'm going to do that is that I'm always going to face or angle my mech so the left side is the one that presents the enemy because I have more armor. Perfectly good strategy and something that you should entertain doing, um, you know, if that's your playstyle. So, I, I personally, um, I'm just going to have it equally distribute like we did before. And then we're going to do this again. Um, going to bring this down to probably 80 and I'm just going to uh, there we go max it out so those are some helpful or I hope helpful tips for you to consider um, rem you know if I were to leave you with a few key points here um, on a high level the first key point is Always look at your left, you know, the top left panel. It's going to tell you very useful information. This is going to tell you how your mech performs in battle for, on a relative perspective. This is going to tell you what you can put in your mech. This is going to tell you the weight of that you can put in your mech. It's going to tell you the number of jump jets. So always refer to the top left. That's the first key tip. The second key tip is don't always just max out everything. Right, just because a mech can take five lasers and two missiles doesn't mean you need five lasers and two missiles. In this case, you can see I did two missiles and three lasers. 
and then I put more heat sinks in and jump jets, right? Because I want to stay heat efficient. Now, depending on your playstyle, I like to try to fire all my weapons that I have in the mech as often as possible. So because of that, I tend to not put in the maximum number of weapons and instead put in more heat sinks so I can fire everything I do have in the mech consistently. That's just a personal preference. You should play and design and customize the mechs the way you want to. That's what the game is made for. Um, one thing that I do recommend though is I always try to keep a heat efficiency of at least three just because if you get under three you're going to be writing your heat line so much that you might only be able to fire one weapon at a time um, which you know could get you in trouble uh, you know if if a reinforcement you know four assault assaults or four heavies pop out um, and you you know you're running hot and you can't fire any of your weapons um, that that could you know put you in a really precarious position um, firepower wise I always try to keep it over three three ticks now these are just general this is general advice that on my playstyle movement I always try to max out and then you, the only way you can impact movement is jump jets so I'm a personal big fan of jump jets you can reposition you can run away you can use the terrain more to your advantage if you have jump jets in my opinion um, melee is going to be fixed unless you're adding in upgrades, equipment upgrades, to increase it. I don't melee too much. Uh, I did have a melee king crab, which was ridiculous and awesome. Um, heavily armored, would run up, take a bunch of damage, then whack the the enemy or death from above the enemy. Fun to, to play, fun to watch. Not so practical um, when you're actually in a mission and you're trying to limit the damage you take and make sure that you don't have too many pilot injuries. Um, whoever was you know, piloting that mech uh, had, even though it had a cockpit mod, tended to have you know, a couple weeks after any given mission of injuries uh, because that was my you know, primary tank mech, putting it out front. But if you want to play that way, by all means, go for it. All right, so let me think. I think I covered almost everything, or if not everything, that I wanted to. At the end of the day, uh, oh, one other thing here. They also have comm systems for, for your cockpit. This is plus morale, one morale gain. So if you're looking to have or generate consistent morale per turn, you can use these comm system uh, upgrades, equipment upgrades, to continuously generate more morale uh, faster, which is fantastic. All right, that's everything that I have. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe um, and you know shoot me a thumbs up. And also, please post. Give me your suggestions, recommendations. I have a lot to improve upon, so any recommendations you can provide would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, and have a good one.